Don't forget Conorac Synthesim Phone. Age, as I recollect, age 14. For a couple of days of sexual pleasure. He stated that he met him while he was walking around the Grand Avenue Mall. He indicated that after introducing himself to the victim, he offered him $50 to accompany him back to his apartment to pose, have some drinks, and watch videos. He feels it was about 5 p.m. when they got there, and once inside, inside the apartment, the victim disrobed down to his black bikini panties, and he posed for several photographs. During the time, he walked him into the bedroom area and sat him on the bed. Mr. Dahmer states that the victim, Tony Hughes, whom he had killed several days earlier, was lying naked on the bedroom floor. He stated that the Asian boy, he believes he saw him, but he did not react to it. He feels this was because of the rum and coffee and sleeping pill mixture. After he realized he was unable to arouse the victim by mouth to penis sex and by body rubbing and kissing him, he continued to watch the video and drink beer until he himself fell asleep. After a few hours, he woke up. It was quite late out, approximately 11 or 12 p.m., at 11 p.m. to 12 a.m., or maybe a little later. He realized the victim was still sleeping because of the effects of the drink he gave him, so he decided to go to the tavern located on 27th, just north of Kilburn, the Care Bear Bar. He continued drinking there. And at closing time, <clears throat> excuse me, after leaving the tavern, he began walking eastbound on West State Street. He observed the victim, the Asian boy, sitting completely naked on the southeast corner of 25th and State. The victim was sitting on the curb. He stated there were two black females standing by him, and they appeared to be hysterical. He walked up to the victim, whom he realized was speaking to the black females in Asian. The victim was disoriented and appeared to be intoxicated by alcohol. However, Mr. Dahmer realized that he must still be under the influence of the drink containing the sleeping pills that he had given him. This time he advised the ladies that the victim was in fact a friend of his he attempted to pull the victim in the direction of the apartment. He stated that the women continued screaming at him, we don't know who you really, we don't know if you really know this guy, and we called the police, why don't you wait until the police get here? In the early morning hours of May 27, 1991, you were a city of Milwaukee police officer, is that correct? That's correct. You pulled into that alley with your squad lights on? The headlights of the squad car were on, yes. And you got out of the car? That's correct. What did you do after you got out of the car? What did you see and what did you do? I exited the car. I was the passenger of the car. There was a group of people in the alley, and they were all pointing to a white male and a second Asian male who was naked uh, just east of our location in the alley. Uh, my partner came up to me and told me that he had obtained information from the white male to whom he was talking to. And basically that the Asian male's name was John Hamong and that he was uh, 20 years old and that he had been staying with him for the last, I believe he said, two to three weeks. Had been staying with whom? With Mr. Dahmer. He also had obtained Dahmer's name at that point, Officer Perupkin and myself and the Asian male and Jeffrey Dahmer began walking toward the rear of the apartment. Uh, while we walked back to the apartment, Mr. Dahmer spoke of the crime in the neighborhood and how bad he thought it was. He said he was glad that the police were in the neighborhood and uh, that there was a need for the police. Um, I believe he may have been smoking a cigarette during that time. As we got near to the apartment building, it was the rear of the apartment building, obviously. Um, he spoke of the need for extra locks on his apartment and that he had a security system because of the, the crime and the nature of the neighborhood. He showed you up to his apartment? Correct. And he convinced you that you could go about your business, that he had everything under control? We were convinced that all was well. And there wasn't anything that you saw that could, for one moment, have caused you to believe that there was any problem at all, correct? There was nothing. Mm 
Mr. Dahmer told me that after the police left, he gave a second injection of muriatic acid and that that proved fatal. But even then, he was attempting to carry out the plan to create a zombie. His words were, then I gave him the second injection of muriatic acid and that was fatal. I didn't intend it to be, but it was. Don't forget Matt Turner, extinguished by the defendant. Jeffrey had attended the Chicago Gay Pride Parade and met this victim at a bus station. He offered him money, took him home to watch Exorcist 3, had light sex, drugged him, and strangled him. He deflashed and acidified the body, saved the skeleton in the freezer, and put the head in the freezer. He threw the other body parts into the trash. Jeffrey noted that around this time, the body meat in his freezer was getting old, and he disposed of it.